Okay, I thought I could take a quick second to go over the differences between your Michaelis Metzen plot and the Lyman Berg plot because as uh, I'm sure a few of you have this question is that, well, we already have our Michaelis Menson plot. So what's the point of even giving a Lyman Berg plot? How does this help us at all? It just makes it look like it's more complicated. And uh, I'm gonna explain the reason how this works in the basis of the Lyman Berg plot, okay? So first we're gonna start off with the Michaelis Menson plot because we've done a few videos on this. And again, we, we on our Michaelis Menson plot, we're graphing our substrate concentration versus our initial velocity. Um, and where we reach that plateau or that Vmax is when all of our enzyme is saturated with substrate. And then we can also graph our Km, which is the substrate concentration required for half the Vmax, right? And that's where we can plot our Km values. Now you're going to say, well, we have all the information we need and we can plug this into our formula, our michaelis Metzen formula, and that should be good enough. However, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Looking at this line mover Burke plot, and looking at this Michaelis Menten plot, okay, maybe if I zoom out a little bit. If, if I was going to try to tell you guys, and I was gonna ask you guys, can you tell me the Vmax for this reaction? You're gonna say, oh yeah, well, let's just look at the Michaelis Menten plot. Yeah, the Vmax is, well, it's kind of this curve if I zoomed in on it. So if I just zoomed in over here. So if I'm zooming in over here, and this is like the asymptote line, I'm gonna get, so I'm, I'm just zooming in over here. I'm, I'm getting closer and closer and closer and closer, but I never reached the true value where the Vmax is, right? So if I was gonna try to figure out exactly where that Vmax value is, and I want it to be very, very precise or exact, I couldn't really do this with this graph because this is an asymptote after all, right? Asymptotes never really achieve that true, that true Vmax value. So the whole point of the Lyman Burke plot, another name for it is the double reciprocal plot, is we take the reciprocal of both our x-axis and our y-axis and we plot them on this new curve or this new line, I guess. And the, by doing this, now instead of having an asymptote and not knowing exactly where our Vmax is, and also because the cam depends on the Vmax, not knowing exactly where the cam value then will be, we can now come to the Lyman Burke plot and just say, oh, we're gonna take double reciprocal. And now we know exactly that at the y-intercept, I'm gonna have my one over Vmax value. So if I just invert this value, I can get my true Vmax value and I'll be precise. Same thing for the can. Okay, notice how the cam over here, it's dependent on the Vmax over two. If I don't know the Vmax, I won't know the Vmax over two, so I won't know the can value. But if I come over to the line of revert plot, that's gonna be now my, x-intercept and it's going to be if i wanted to find the true km value i take the negative one or i inverse that and i make it a positive value to get to the true km value okay so the idea here is that the line of Burke plot makes taking our data much much easier okay because now instead of having this asymptote and then figuring out exactly where it reaches that asymptote and all this stuff i can just take the double reciprocal or the reciprocal of each axis and I can get my one over Vmax, which is my y axis or my y intercept, and my negative one over Km to get my, uh, or the x intercept, which is going to get my Km value. Now, one other thing I'm going to add is because this is a little bit counterintuitive. So, normally when we go up on our y axis, this is going to give us bigger values. But because this is a double reciprocal plot, actually the bigger values are going to be going this way, okay? Same thing with the line over Berg plot. Now you're gonna say, oh yeah, the bigger values, you kind of have to think about and it's a little bit confusing because you also have a negative to account for and you're inversing it. So I'm gonna give you guys this trick, okay? So the bigger values, you're always gonna to go towards the origin. So if I go down towards the origin or right towards the origin, that's going to give me a bigger Km and a bigger Vmax value. So if I ever want to increase the Vmax, I'd go, downwards, or if I ever want to increase the Km, I go right towards the origin. If I want to decrease the Vmax, I go this way. If I want to decrease the Km, I go that way, okay? So a good trick is that go towards the origin to get larger values for your Vmax and your Km. 